Vancouver on the road with Thatcher Demko, a favorite here. <laughs> Did I read that? Did I read that right? I know I did, but just kind of making fun of the line a little bit. All right. Got the Canucks here with their two, maybe their two and oh. Is this a new era? <laughs> In Vancouver, are we back in the 80s here with the Vancouver Canucks? Look, they were they finished strong, especially on the road now, dating back to last season. Remember, they were kind of hot on the road late, and uh, they had actually won seven of their last nine games on the road, dating back to last season. For Demko, let me just bring up the goalies here. Make sure we make sure uh, see where we're at with them, and uh, make sure there are no changes. But uh, none of these, not, neither of these two guys are confirmed in here tonight. But uh, Demko so far uh, had 21 saves in his first game, facing 22 shots in that uh, victory for Vancouver, the eight to one win that we've talked about many times, a couple times on the show already over Edmonton in that season opener and then came back to beat him 4-2. And that has been the two victories so far for Vancouver, for Philadelphia. They uh, won at Columbus 4-2 to two, and then lost at Ottawa 5-2. to two. So, uh, with this total at six and a half, I certainly, uh, you know, these two teams could have, uh, you know, like I said, we've already seen some goals out of these two teams, considering that uh, six and a half goals was the is the average so far in those two games in Philadelphia, and uh, boy, eight goals in those games for Vancouver so far. But uh, for me in this one, if the total is going to be here, make sure it's still at six and a half. Oh, it is down to six. Oh, boy. All right. Well, because uh, I wanted to go, I guess I'm going to do it. I'm going to go under on the show here now. I, uh, I was going to maybe go under as a premium, but let me just dial it back a little bit uh, after yesterday's results as well. Um, and take the under in this one, under six goals with uh, the Canucks and the Flyers. I liked it under six and a half. Uh, maybe there is some six and a half out there, but let me also correct the total here, at least to reflect and not give myself the best line. Let's challenge myself. It's definitely, it's definitely juiced to the over, but not by much, I'll tell you. Uh, some of the sharper shops not even six over 50 of course they deal a tight uh, a smaller line talked about you guys were talking about i want to go back to it here in just a second let me give out the play and uh got another i got a comment here but uh, it's under in the canucks and the flyers the minnesota wild will take on the montreal canadiens tonight in Montreal, and in this one, you have the Wild on the road, a dollar forty or so here. The total is also a dropper. Call it six over fifteen now. Have they not been well? Maybe I, I don't know. The first few nights uh, there were some overs, but. And we're starting to get to some unders now. And maybe the books are catching up to that a little bit. This one with the Wild and the... Uh, I don't have the Canadians goalie up there, but I'm expecting it to be Jake Allen. So let's put it as such. Why I left 
take off there. Okay, there we go. And Flurry is confirmed to be in goal in this one for the Wild. And uh, Allen is unconfirmed at this point. But you have here another another dropper. Man, this is bumming me out here. I'm, uh, I was ready. I'm, I was kind of ready to make the switch after last night to try to maybe start to go under uh, in some of these um, in some of these games. But uh, this total looks like it's moved against me a little bit as well, down to six over fifteen right now, and a dollar forty from the wild for the wild here. But uh, I was looking to go under in this game, and I guess I'm just gonna I'm gonna make this my free play here. All of a sudden, where uh, yeah, let me see if there's any six and a halfs out there. I mean, this is where I was heading was a uh, to go under six and a half. Well, Circa's still hanging a six and a half, but the Vegas books are still hanging six and a half. But it looks like the major U.S. books moving down to six so i'm just going to come in under a six here and uh jimmy thanks for shouting out fernando's plays if that's what if i'm reading that correctly that's great that uh, you're following him and having some great success of late okay here's a wild and under uh seven and a half on a same game parlay and uh, I would hope that my Canadians could get something together here in this one. Look, they uh, they have a, a you know a win so far, so that's positive, certainly for the Habs. And uh, you know Montreal, they've only won four out of their last thirteen home games dating back to last season. And uh, while these two teams are you know, only meet twice a year. Usually a home-dominated series. 13 of the last 19 have gone to the home team. And Minnesota kind of dominates also in this series, having won 16 of the last 21 meetings. Now that's probably about a, um, you know, 10-year sample size. So, eh, Canadians have been bad that long, no doubt about it. And I'll just end up on the under here with this move. Both teams are one and one so far. Uh, this season, Minnesota having beaten Florida two to nothing and uh, lost at Toronto seven to four. Montreal, of course, lost at. Season opener to Toronto, six to five in a shootout, and then came back to beat the Blackhawks three to two. Fernando's leaning over here, going against me. I'm got under here in this one as my play here on the show. That's what I'm doing. The Arizona Coyotes take on the New York Islanders. Free NHL pick for Tuesday, October seventeenth. Veg Milka going up here. Looks like against Sorokin. Veg Milka is the confirmed goalie, and uh, Sorokin not yet. But uh, Veg Milka, he's the one that got the win for the Coyotes. And uh, uh, in that uh, first game, and for Sorokin, he has a win as well under his belt, having just allowed two goals so far. Let's see. The price here, Islander, is $1.90 in this one. And the total currently six under 25. We're seeing a little bit of a move here to the under this morning. Looks like at least 10 cents since I've entered in these lines. For Arizona, of course, uh, they're pretty dreadful on the road. We know that, but uh, they 
have, we're going over late last season, and we'll see if that continues. But um, this has been, you know, a disaster here. Arizona's won one out of the last nine trips to play the Islanders. So it's going to be hard to think they have a shot here, even at $1.90, to compete in this one. Was Sorokin a 93%? He, he stopped 26 of uh, 28 shots in his season debut. And uh, Benjamin, I think he actually came in that other game. I think he's actually seen time in in uh, uh, both games so far. And, uh, of course, Arizona lost at the Rangers 2-1. to one. They beat the uh, Devils 4-3. to three. Yeah, to, to a shootout, but we had them on that night. Darren says, give me the Arizona puck line. And over in this one, Arizona on the puck line, $1.50. The Islanders uh, beat... Buffalo last time out, three to two. And they lost to Carolina. Uh, that was in their uh, in their opener. So uh, they come in uh, one and zero oh so far. So it does seem you know I like I said, Arizona expected to be better. They definitely have looked better so far in both. I would say in both games, Arizona has, you know, looked uh, looked good. But do have them here on a back-to-back. Don't forget because they played last night uh, against the Rangers and lost that game late. It was one-to-one for the longest time, and then the Rangers got that late goal. Fernando says, what about the under in this uh, in this game, and that's obviously where the move is, Fernando. And I'm not sure if I want to pull. Let me see here. Darren says, or no, let's see. Fernando says, "Give me the Islanders here on the puck line. Go ahead and lay it here with the Isles." Um. Yeah, what did we say? Arizona's plus one and a half, minus a dollar fifty. Islanders, of course, minus one and a half at plus one thirty. All right. Well, Fernando says, "What do I think of the under?" And I feel like the price is getting away from the under is what I feel like here because that's. <laughs> Could I actually give out all unders here on the show? Because that's what I feel like doing in this game. And uh, that's where we're probably going to go, it feels like. But I do like that. Now, Arizona's been they've been playing too. Like I said, I want to feel like there's even still value uh, on the. Uh, oh, wow, Darren. Okay, so it seems like there's still value to be had on Arizona. Uh, five and a half at FanDuel. Wow. Five and a half over 20 at Bovada. I better give myself the right price if I'm going to do it and give myself the toughest price here to beat and uh, go to five and a half over 20. And I'll take the under. Give me three unders so far on the show. Now, that one probably wasn't wasn't necessarily going to be qualifying for an under. Like I said, I wasn't even necessarily talking it up too much, but that was, you know, my initial consideration. Now there's no chance for me on a premium, I would think, in this one uh, to, to do that. Um, and thank you to Darren. Tampa Bay Lightning at Buffalo Sabres. Free NHL pick. This one's for Tuesday, <laughs> October 17th. Lightning here uh, on the road against the Sabres. And look at that total. Now, that one's not looking like the other ones 
some of these aren't like the others is what it feels like. Buffalo coming in 0-2 so far, including a loss at home. And Tampa Bay has lost a couple of road games so far. We're expected to have Jonas Johansson in there today. In goal. How about that? Now, Tampa, we'll see if uh, – uh, let me see here. Final. Of course, uh, the losses were at Detroit. Six to four at Ottawa, five to two. You don't necessarily, you know, expect to see, uh, you know, I don't know, back to back losses. Here we are, third road game. Look, they won the game at home against Nashville, five to three, as part of the, as part of their one and two start so far. And they got a couple of overs so far this season. Buffalo, let me see, 115, 7 under 30. 7 is kind of a number where not every book will go all the way up to 7. But, well, here it is. I think every, I think all the books are pretty much sitting at 7. Yep. And uh, Buffalo, the slight favorite, certainly. Uh, in this one, and. Uh, both teams, you know, kind of producing a lot of goals. I mean, it seems appropriate. I, I you know, I knew I couldn't get six and a half, and I'm not going to put it on the screen at six and a half. But Darren says maybe go under here in this one and leaning to Tampa on the road. And they do pretty well in this series, just a little bit of concern having. Uh, you know, lost two straight, but the Lightning have won 11 of their last 15 trips here into Buffalo, and that's a, a positive sign, uh, certainly. And, well, with a, there's going to be a ton of goals. Maybe that'll lean to a little bit of vol uh, volatility. Johansson has just an 88, 89% save percentage so far. And... Uh, Levy is at eighty-eight percent, so maybe these guys will be giving up the uh, giving up the goals here. Buffalo's, go, you know, has a couple of unders so far, but feels like <laughs> feels like a lot of goals are going to be scored, you guys, and I might be willing to do it, but I kind of want to uh, factor in the Tampa Bay. I don't know if they'll lose three in a row here, especially against the Buffalo team that is off to a sluggish uh, start so far. So I think I like that uh, lean there from Darren, and I'm probably going to end up taking the lightning here as my play. Like I said, they have good history against Buffalo. I don't think the lightning are necessarily. Hello to uh, Miller Entertainment. Joining us, he's already got his football ready to go, and thanks for leaving that there. I'll be previewing those games here in just a moment. As soon as we get through this card, but I'll take Tampa Bay on the road here. Because, uh, you know, we'll see, but I know that uh, they definitely, you know, have uh, done well, like I said, done well in this series, uh, no doubt about it, and Oh, Tampa Bay right now, they are giving up a ton of shots, but let's just uh, let's just dial it back a little bit here a couple games into the season and see what happens. Give me the uh, uh, lightning in this one, and uh, I know Darren's saying lean the under there, but feels like this one's going to be a little wacko. Edmonton Oilers, Nashville Predators for Tuesday. Oilers on the road, $1.45, six and a half over at minus 120. Final. See if we got the uh, Skinner and the Sarish matchup here. And uh, neither goalie confirmed at this point, but feels like the right matchup today. From everything we've seen, you got both teams already with a couple of losses so far. Edmonton with that 0-2 start that we talked about and 
Uh, Nashville also with a couple of losses, but they did win their game so far at home, and they're 0-2 on the road. Final. It was a uh, uh, for Nashville a three nothing uh, victory um, at home. I'm sorry, yeah, uh, at home against Seattle. Uh, the losses were at Tampa Bay five to three and at Boston three to two. Of course, it was uh, Edmonton, uh, like I said, with that road victory. Um, uh, I mean, that road defeat, of course, they're 0-2. I mentioned the, the two games against Vancouver, the home-and-home. Home. I'm losing that game 8-1, to one, left everybody scratching their head, and then they come back home and lost 4-3. to three. So uh, considering, you know, in that Vegas series, we have just a little bit of need a win here, Oilers. Need to get a win here somehow in this one. And... I don't know. It feels uh, like it could be a tough spot. Uh, I know the Oilers should be decent here, and you don't think they'll lose three in a row, but the pressure is going to be on here, and they're favored on the road against the Nashville team that, well, let's just face it, the Oilers have dominated the Predators. I don't know if that part is factored into the line. Maybe it is. They've won eight of the last nine meetings against Nashville. And, uh, you know, Nashville, uh, you know, when they're a dog, they play low, they play low scoring games. And, uh, you know, they play low scoring games in general, feels like to me. Now, Edmonton, uh, certainly you can, you know, what you sometimes do is throw out that big score a little bit. Yeah, they lost, but you don't count them for eight goals. You know, it just was a bad night. If you lose, if you lose eight to seven, you count the eight goals. If you lose eight to one, it's like losing five to one. Now, you don't want to mess up your number. You know, your uh, numbers, your ratings too much when you know the team's given up and all that. This is a home dominated series, but Edmonton needs. You know, and needs a win, obviously, after this slow start. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, data points here at this point for totals. I mean, I want to, you know, stay involved uh, in the totals as much as I can because that's my, you know, that's my specialty. But we're riding now just an even streak so far after last night, so. All right. Now, for me, it does feel like under is a, a call for me here with Nashville being at home. I mean, that's usually what happens with Nashville games of late. It feels like, yeah, Edmonton and the, the overs, I get it so far. <laughs> but Darren said he likes betting Nashville <laughs> unders, and I do too. And, uh, you know, they've already had a couple of them. So let's do it, Darren, you and I. Maybe that's our consensus. Let's take the under here with Edmonton and Nashville. And he says the value is on Nashville. And I agree. I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, home dog, I don't, you know, I don't want to downgrade Nashville too far. You know, they, when they can, you know, they really can be okay in home situations. But like I said, that's a dominating series now. Uh, granted, given they don't play as frequently, but eight to one Edmonton in the last nine. Kings at Jets. Jets minus a dollar 30, total six slash five. <laughs> Six and a half under 20. I'll, Final. I'll fix my graphic. In this one with uh, Hellebuck going up here against Talbot. The Jets favored at home against the Kings. Hellebuck is confirmed in goal here by the Beat Riders. He'll be in there today. Uh, Talbot 
not confirmed yet, but I don't think he would be in there. The Kings so far uh, with uh, no wins yet. They do got a loss. They did earn a point uh, in their uh, two games at home thus far. They had the um, uh, 5-2. Let's see. It was a 6-5. 6-5 game in the shootout uh, against Carolina, of course. They led that game 5-3, to three, and Carolina came back to win it 6-5. to five. Or was it vice versa? I don't know. It was only three days ago. 6-5. Carolina got the win. The Kings... Uh, also lost at home to Colorado. So a little bit of rough start for my Kings and feels a little bit uncomfortable here going on the road uh, to play, you know, an Edmonton team that, uh, man, uh, when these two teams get together, not many goals are scored. These are, you know, two teams that, you know, that square off semi-frequently. And uh, I don't know. I guess uh, you can tell where I'm kind of going. I mean, first of all, uh, remember Ed, uh, Winnipeg last year? They were all about the unders, right? I mean, they were clicking unders at a two to one pace all season long, it seemed like. And, uh, you know, usually in games just like this, where they're favored to win. Oh, but Darren said, oh, oh he meant over. But no, Darren, let's, I mean, uh, Winnipeg last 61 games dating back to last season, uh, eight, uh, 19, uh, what is it? 39 unders, 18 overs and four pushes. That's a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong trend. We'll see if things are changing a little bit, but so far, I mean, you look at Edmonton's, uh, first or Winnipeg's first two games of the season. Yeah. High scoring with the, uh, Five to three loss at Calgary. They beat Florida six to four, but I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going under with the Kings and the Jets. I've got five unders so far. And let me see, is this uh, still the total six and a half under? I want to make sure I'm not getting ahead of these you know, six and a half under 25. So this one's moving under as well. And uh, I don't know, you know, maybe if I'm. I don't start off with a blanket strategy. It just kind of works that way. But I've got another under here tonight. I don't know if some of the numbers have kind of thrown things off a little bit higher where I feel like the value is on the under. Remember, I'm, I'm, I've got multiple sets of numbers, but I'm handicapping by hand, believe me. I'm looking at those numbers, and I'm making the decision. I'm making the final decisions here. And no, no computer, no uh, AI is gonna make gonna make the call for me when it comes to making the final decision. And the final decision here is I'm going under in the Kings game against the Jets, and uh, maybe I just gave out my premium in that game, but it's a big card today with the nine games, so we'll we'll have plenty of opportunity. The Colorado Avalanche is going to take on the Seattle Kraken. Gurdjieff going up against Grubauer here in this one. I'm showing the Avalanche here at $1.50. And the total, six and a half under, minus $1.25. And, uh, well, uh, we know the story. We know the storyline here with. This matchup, of course, dates back to the playoff games uh, of la the playoff series uh, last year, of course, with the uh, with the two teams and Colorado um, eliminating Seattle in the seven game series. Remember, every game was a one go. Well, not every game, but just every game, total low scoring playoff hockey. Oh, look at that, Nate. I thought, you know how sometimes the cursor covers up the, and I had, 
I thought it was covering up the L. No, I had Abba colon Lanch. Abba colon Anch. There we go. Avalanche here. So far, they have the uh, couple of wins, including a 2-1 win over San Jose in a shootout. A 5-2 win over my Kings. And for Seattle, they've played three games thus far. Uh, all losses. They did earn a point against St. Louis, but they lost at VGK 4-1. They lost at Nashville uh, 3 to nothing. And what happened to our road Kraken? Fernando wants to go over, it looks like, in this one at 6.5. But Darren says, give me Colorado and under. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'll, you know, I know we got a little conflict there. Uh, in the chat, but I, I don't know if I can pass, given maybe these two will just uh, throw out the strategy sheets and whatnot, but 10 of the last 11 meetings between these two teams have gone under, and boy, this is looking pretty gross here today. I'm taking another under on the show, and I have just taken six unders in seven games so far. Um That's all right. <laughs> gonna gonna do what you gotta do. But uh, that's what I'm gonna do uh, so far. See, all three Seattle games have gone under as well. Uh, Ten of the last eleven in this series, all three Seattle games so far this season, have gone under. I will say that uh, Seattle as a home underdog kind of trends over. At least they did late last season. And uh, Colorado, pretty outstanding right now. No reason to think they're not going to be a top contender. Already a couple of wins. But, uh, no, laying, some, laying a little bit of juice here today against a team that just took them, uh, uh, you know, seven games in the playoffs, and you're getting some pretty big plus money at home. I don't uh, team that doesn't have a win yet against the team, you know, these two teams went all the way to seven games, decided the last game by a two to one margin, ultra close between these two teams. You know, did the Kraken overachieve last season? Maybe. They still should be a pretty decent team. These guys are right, you know, yeah, sure, Colorado's ahead of them, but yeah, me too, Darren. And I uh, don't want to come on here and just say take all the unders. That would be too easy. Plus, the other game that I mentioned uh, was kind of leaning to the over. Hurricanes and Sharks. Free NHL pick for Tuesday. Hurricanes. Frederick Anderson on the road here uh, in this one. And the Hurricanes, a massive favorite here, obviously. Uh, against the Sharks, but hey, it hasn't been all a disaster for the Sharks. They did earn a point already uh, at home, remember, in the uh, two to one loss against Colorado. So that, you know, got to take that into consideration. Yeah, do the Sharks have problems scoring goals? Probably. Uh, you know, it looks like the same Sharks as, uh, as last year pretty much so far. They just have two goals. Now, granted, they did play, uh, you know, BGK in Colorado, and now they've got to play Carolina, another, you know, good team. Uh, despite Carolina losing that game, like I said, we, look, we were on Anaheim. We gave out Anaheim in that game, and they lost. But uh, don't see it happening today. Uh, I think they bounce back from it. I think this Carolina team is very, very sharp. I'm going to take a puck line here on the show. You know I love those puck lines on the show. What we need is my old partner back and do a bunch of puck lines, and I'll do another one here with uh, Frederick Anderson on the road. Uh, I would think they'll put up some 
goals here in this one. San Jose, uh, they've lost 40 of their last 51 home games, basically, you know, a 20% winning percentage over the last season and a half or so, season and a quarter at, uh, at home. And for whatever reason, Carolina has had good success against uh, when they've come out for these games. And uh, they've just been terrific. Big, big price here. Uh, but I'm, you know, just be, it kind of feels like to me because uh, the Hurricanes lost that game to Anaheim that, the, that's they'll they'll experience about the bounce back and get the victory is what it feels like. Dan Darren will do it. Darren will do the same thing as well here. And uh, the total you see, what did I say the total was? Uh, six over twenty. Here's a mover so far. I believe this one got hit somewhat to the under. I don't think it was officially widely reported steam that I saw, but I definitely saw some six and a halfs. And uh, we're down to six. So all right. You know, these two teams uh, you know don't meet that frequently, but every time you know the last ten of the last thirteen Meetings between the two teams in San Jose have gone over 10 of the last 13. And a lot of times, even though those are wide sample sizes, uh, you know, over a half a dozen years, sometimes it does have a little bit to do with the, you know, the way the travel's set up or the way that, you know, uh, patterns a little bit here. Because a lot of times you do make those same trips. That's why we said that it was kind of a spot where they could get caught in a spot at Anaheim the next night on the back-to-back. -back. But I'll take Carolina here to win this one and win it big. We have one more game on the ice with the Dallas Stars taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, no hangover for the Vegas Golden Knights. They're off to a 3-0 start, including a couple of home victories. Dallas won their game on the road. They'll have Odinger here going up against Aiden Hill. Neither goalie uh, confirmed just yet. And, uh, well, when these two teams meet, it's been, you know, kind of rugged, certainly. There's been some low-scoring games. When uh, Dallas beats up with Vegas, and of course they had, you know, their playoff series as well. Uh, remember last season? Now they only went six games. Remember the blowout, six to nothing, in that final game for Vegas. But remember, three of the games went uh, overtime, including two of the games here in Vegas. And uh, I don't know, a little bit of a cheap number for a team that's coming in 3-0 and so far. Looks like Darren's on the under in this one. We know these are two, you know, two of the best teams, certainly in the Western Conference, uh, you know, this season. But that's the way I'm, I've got to look at this one is to go – under as well. It's six, I understand, but uh, boy, there it is. Uh, final tally on the show: seven unders uh, on the show to on the show today. Final. As I will take the under in this one with undefeated Vegas. Teams have combined. All four games have gone under so far. And. Let me see. Any five and a, any five and a halfs out there? 
It feels like it might go to five, but yeah, there is. I'm showing uh, uh, one uh, offshore book already hitting it down to five and a half. So maybe I should just uh, put give myself the worst line possible just in case. If you guys get a six, you can do it. I'll just uh, switch it to five and a half over 20. And I'll take the under with the stars and the golden knights as my play here today. 